Well, hello stampers. It's the Pampered Stamper and it is Tuesday and that means it's time for stories and stamps. And for the last three weeks I have been telling the story of my parents, mom and pop, their love story because they were born in Holland and then their honeymoon was a trip to Canada. And now we've come full circle and their daughter is back in Holland and preparing to get married to a Dutchman. So I thought so many people have asked for my story and Gerard's story and I thought I can't tell my story without first telling the story of my parents and it's really an amazing story they have been my inspiration they're amazing people and I think it's a wonderful story and apparently you are also enjoying it so I just want to thank you for all the interaction that I've had in the last three weeks some of you are sharing your stories and I would encourage you that if your parents are still alive ask them talk to them get those stories they are gold um, it's through learning the stories of your parents and your grandparents that you have a deeper understanding of who you are. So let's pick up where we left off. The last time I was talking to you, my parents had landed in Halifax and they were taking the train to Manitoba. But I want to correct a few things. I had told you that my mother had sold her wedding dress to buy um, like her trousseau kind of thing, her the, the the dishes and the linens um, for their new house but that is not what she did she sold her wedding dress to buy a baby layout it was her biggest dream she was 26 pop was 31 they wanted to start a family right away and so she bought all the little sweaters and the little um, sleep shirts and sleepers and booties and hats and ba and crib sheets and blankets and all that stuff with the dress from with the sale of her wedding dress that she had made herself and the other thing that I wanted to say was that when they when they landed in Halifax they had to take a train for five days and they traveled third class which meant they were sitting on a hard wooden bench and every clickety clack of that train made them realize how much further they were going away from their family so that part of the journey was like the reality was setting in of the the, the enormity of the choice that they had made and then when they got to Winnipeg they had to drive for an hour and my father's brother, Marinus, was already living there with his wife, Ina, because they had immigrated after Pop had, Pop had already been in Canada for a few years off and on, working and saving, and um, so his brother had come too. So they were able to stay with his brother, but Mom said it was like there was no privacy. There weren't even doors on the bedrooms. So that's not exactly the ideal start on a newly um, married couple once but it was better than being on the street so it didn't take them long they definitely had encouragement and reason to find their own place and they did so they left from um, they left from Manitoba just two years later my brother Oliver was only um, I think he was six months so he was born in 1960 and that is when they moved in November of 1960 they drove to Ontario and my father had to drive through northern Ontario pulling a U-Haul trailer and mom said it was terrifying the roads were icy um, the truck was yeah with pulling a U-Haul if you go a little bit too fast and you're going down big hills and then there's those curves at the bottom of the hill mom was afraid for her life so when they drove into Fergus going down a winding road and they were just so happy to be warmly welcomed by the congregation there and they got to stay at the pastor's house for the weekend before they moved to um, Bellwood and there they had a home that they again shared with his brother Marinus my parents lived upstairs and they only lived there for six months before they found the farm that was the dream of course my father wanted to be a farmer he was a farmer at heart and that's why he moved to Canada because there was opportunity there was land so the farm that my parents bought is the farm that I grew up on that's where I lived my whole life before I got married and I asked my dad I said what what made you choose this farm And he said oh I fell in love with the land with the Vista so let me explain um, the farm is one concession out of town so it's side road number two and it's a fairly level road it has a little bit of an undulating um, feel to it but when you go down the long driveway the driveway is quite long you cannot see the house from the road the, the farm driveway is lined by maple trees 
But when you get to the end of the driveway, you go past the barn and then you can see that the farmhouse is built on the top of a hill. And then down at the bottom of the hill is a winding creek. And then there's another big hill. And at the back of that hill is a forest. And from the farmhouse, you can kind of see down the valley and it's just the most beautiful view. And that is what both my mom and my dad fell in love with, even though it wasn't the most practical. Because for a farm, the best land is flat land. It's efficient, it's safe, um, but my father is a romantic at heart and he fell in love with the role of the land and the beautiful view. And then the other story is, well, how did this farm become available? I mean, it was just outside of town and apparently it was owned by Scottish people. They were second or third generation by the name of LG. And they were selling the farm because Mrs. LG was a town girl and she simply could not get used to living in the country. So they were wonderful people. They, Mom said that not only did they leave some pieces of furniture behind, including an oak kitchen table that my brother and his family now sit around in the farmhouse, but also she gave their clothes for the kids. And um, it was just really nice. They were warmly welcomed as new immigrants and it, they needed all the help they could get. So included in purchase of the farm was some machinery, um, chickens, pigs, and a couple of cows. And I said to mom, well, what did you do with the cows? Because pup was not a dairy farmer yet then. He didn't have any milk quota. And she said they delivered cream to the creamery in Fergus. And the, they sold eggs from the chickens. And I think the pigs were also sold for meat. So. My father said he learned quite quickly that he did not want to make his money with chickens because they're small and cleaning eggs. Um, it just was really hard work for the, for the amount of money that it paid. So I will continue my story. First, we're going to do some stamping. So I'm going to just show you the new in colors using the Sending Smiles um, stamp set. I only ordered three stamp sets from the new catalog because of the pre-order and Sending Smiles was one of them. Happiness Abounds was the other one. And the last one that I got was the, this one is Dutch Tea and Troost. And I think it's just called Cup of Tea in, in the English version. So I'm going to use Sending Smiles and we're going to just stamp them in the colors so that you can see how nice the new in colors are. And the thing is with the in colors, there is a special deal on the starter kit right now that if you get the starter kit, then you will get, oh, I have them already on blocks, okay. And you will get a whole in color kit. You'll get all the five ink pads. So, um, well, should I show them to you? Parakeet Party, Tahitian Thai, Sweet Sorbet, Orchid Oasis, and Starry Sky. So they're beautiful colors. You'll get five ink pads. You'll get um, an assorted pack of cardstock. You'll get um, patterned paper and ooh, grid paper. And I think that's it, but it's worth $90. So it's a really nice bonus. And that's usually what we want is the new in colors. So here we have the beautiful greenery. Maybe we'll put in some extra stuff. Now I want to show you all the different colors. Let's have a peek. Blanc. We'll start with Sweet Sorbet, which is a fresh pinky red. It's, um, I haven't compared it exactly side by side with the other reds. I should have done so and I could show you, but you know what? There's only so much time in a day. And actually, this is my second go at doing this video. I thought I, I was almost done. And then it, it seemed to have not it stopped recording on me somehow. So that was unfortunate. So that's that. And let's see, let's do another one. Oh, I seem to be missing one of my stamps. I have no idea where it went. I hate it when that happens. That's okay. Let's do this one in Tahitian Thai. It's kind of hard to switch my mind from stories to stamps. I can't see what I'm doing. That'll do. I didn't want to have that line going through, but it is, that's okay. 
Okay, so we're going to use, I think, the starry sky for this other flower. You know what? I'm not... Oh, that actually turned out quite well. So starry sky is like a indigo blue. It's like a deep blue with perhaps a little undernote of purple to it. It's really lovely. So I'm going to close that up. And then the last color, so we have four colors on here now. The last color I want to show you is Orchid Oasis. And I'm going to use this stamp that looks a little bit like lavender or stocks or whatever. And I'm just going to put them down here. Dark one, light one. And then there's no stem for this one, but you can just use your marker and make one. There. And then we can add a leaf and make it work. Don't you think? So I hope that you um, consider the starter kit. I love it that um, to have people on my team. We do so many fun things together. There you go. And I'm just going to add a few more leaves. Why not? Add a little greenery in there. And now I thought it might be fun to do the great big word smiles and then I'm going to tell you some more stories and then we're going to show the blends because the, the new in colors come in all the blends and then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what these colors look like when you watercolor with them okay and let's have a look see I need to find the big word smart sending oh I see it's up here so what you do with photopolymer stamps is you lay them down and then you pick them up with your block. And you see, oh, but I didn't do a good job. I'm going to do this again. I want it completely on my block. There. That's better. Okay. And then I'll do it at the top. I was going to do it at the bottom, but we're going to do it at the top. And we're going to do it in starry sky because I just love that color. It's nice and bold for the words. So anyway, um, I hope that you have a lot of fun paging through your new catalog. I always have a hard time deciding at first what to, to prioritize. Like what do I really want? You know, what's a must have? And then to go from there. But anyway, it's just much so much fun just going through and looking at all the stuff and dreaming and planning your creativity. But I always, always, always start with getting all the in colors and everything to go with it because it's just so nice to play with. It's fresh, it's fun. Um, the in colors are in the tea paper. There's also in color paper. When you have pattern paper that matches the colors of your inks, you will use them a lot more. So that's kind of neat. I'm just going to lay that down here. Oops. Photopolymer stamps are super sticky when you first get them. There. And I'm going to do this in the same color just because maybe it would be better to do it in a different color, but I'm just doing it like so. Sending a card to say hello. So now you get an idea of the, the in colors and how pretty they are. Now, where did I leave off with my story? My goodness. Okay, my parents have bought the farm. Let me just move my stuff out of the way. Let me put that over there. Okay. And, okay, and they bought it from the LG family. Here we are. Um, oh yeah, so I was telling about the cows and the pigs and the chickens and the creamery. And the creamery, I didn't know about that. I just found that out this summer. So that's another thing about asking questions. I thought I had asked all the questions. I thought I had heard all the stories and I have not. So that was an interesting little piece of, uh, of, of their story. Now, now we're gonna get to a sad part. So my parents bought the farm in 19, in 1961, in May or so, and in January, at the end of January 1962, my mother and my father had to bury their baby son. So my baby brother was born by C-section, and what happened was, I don't know if it just took a little bit too long to take him out. That technique perhaps wasn't as refined as, as it is now, and he inhaled amniotic fluid. So he had fluid in his lungs, and five hours after his birth, he died. And other than that, there was nothing wrong with him. My parents never gave him a name. Just 
called him Baby Boot, and but it's been it's been such an impact on their lives that whenever they've had a celebration, an anniversary, they always want him mentioned. They always want people reminded that he was a part of our family. So yes, I would have had another older brother. And then between that tragedy and my birth, mom had three more miscarriages. So there are seven years between me and my brother. So I was born in June of 1967. And if you look at the description of this video and the picture, you will see that it's all about when the Dutch family comes to visit. So after I was born, I think I was three weeks old, and mom said I was a colicky baby. That is when my opa and oma Dobomolt came to visit for the first time. So this was the first time that they got to see their three grandchildren, Adriana, Oliver, and Jackie. And it was incredible. So the picture on this, this video is from a postcard that they sent back to Holland to their parents. So my mom still had her grandparents living in Holland. And so I can only imagine how much she missed her family. Every single Sunday she would write letters back to Holland. And every week we would get a letter back from Omar Gobelmolt. And also from my dad's family. So there were lots and lots of letters. Mom has boxes of letters. And so I will be delving into that family history too, I'm sure. But it was pretty exciting for my mom to have her parents come and help. I know that my opa Dobomont helped my father around the farm and um, yeah, it was it was pretty special. There are pictures of me in my baptism gown with Oma and Opa Dobomont and that's how it all started. And I know that my opa, Boot, on my dad's side, he visited the next year, so it was 1968, and then he got sick. He had come by boat and my Oma was already dead. My Oma died quite young from a heart attack. She was only in her early 60s. And um, so she was already dead by this time. And something happened to Opa Boot and he wasn't able to go back home with the boat. They told him he had to get home quickly and he had to fly home. So my mother went with him and so did I. So I was 16 months old and that's when I went to Holland for the first time. And the neat thing is, is there's all kinds of pictures of me and my mom with my aunts and uncles and cousins. So growing up, I saw all those pictures and I wanted to see these people for myself. And, um, okay, we're going to stop the story and I'll tell you some more about my cousins and what that first visit to Holland was like for me, just based on what other people have told, not on what I know myself. Okay, so everything still seems to be going well. Um, now I'm going to show you what the blends look like. Okay, so I have already stamped the, some flowers from this uh, Happiness Abound stamp set right here. And now we're going to try it out. And, I, you know, blends are not all created equal. So here we have our um, parakeet party, and this is dark. So we're going to start with the dark one. Mm. I'm just going to go along the edge. And, oops, I missed a little bit. I don't have my color lifter here. Um... Yes, blends are all different. And I guess I like to go with the dark first and then go with the light over top. And then you just go over it and it blends it right in. And you just lightly, you don't have to press. You just lightly pull in that color there. Beautiful. Okay, so I really like that. I'm happy with that color. Now we will go to the sorbet. And this is the, so it tells you on here, this is the dark sweet sorbet. So I'm just going to do the middle dark completely. The inside of the rose is usually darker than the outside. And now I'm just going to do this. Can you guys see? I should maybe focus in a little bit more. Hey, what do you think? Let's see. Zoom in so that you can see a little bit better. All right. Now I'm going to take the light. You shouldn't work too far ahead, otherwise you can't blend anymore. Okay, then the lines will get too liney. If that makes any sense. And then we do have a color lifter that will give you a little bit more. So you can see how pretty that is. I'll go a little bit further. I don't think I'm going to color the whole, oh, maybe the whole rows in. I'm not known for my patience. Mm. 
And I'm just showing you a little bit. It's just beautiful. You have to use a really light touch with your blends. Don't press hard at all. The, the color is just so rich and it goes on so smoothly. I absolutely love blends. The reason I have markers is like to draw stems or to color on your um, directly on your blocks, but I don't color with markers because the blends just do it so much nicer. See, so now I'm just going over this to get rid of that line. It's just like velvet on the page. There. So that's looking good. I'm going to leave it for that. I'm going to go next is Orchid Oasis. And I could have gone with some yellow on there, but I'm not. Like I said, I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. So I'm going to go in here. And while I color, I will talk. So my trip to Holland, because my father was, he's number, he has three older sisters and then one older brother. So he was number five out of nine children. And he also got married late. He was 31 when he got married. So that means his older siblings had kids way earlier than he did. So I had cousins in Holland when I came, when I was a year, I had cousins that were teenagers and some were just turning like 20. There's a whole generation. Um, older than me. And so one of my cousins, Mari, she tells me the story. And I mean, I've seen pictures. She was getting engaged when I was there. They had an engagement party. And she said she picked me up and I was playing with her corsage and I ruined it. But she didn't mind. She was just so excited to hold this cute, happy baby. Um, and now we're the best of friends. I, I, there's not many a trip goes that I don't go to see them. It's an hour drive from here. A busy hour because I have to go through Rotterdam and through all these tunnels and crazy traffic and, and all kinds of places where you get tickets for speeding but the neat thing is is that now I have a relationship with these cousins that they, they're like sisters to me and that started back when I was 16 months old so that is just so cool that that those that that can be picked up again and my mom was, of course, just so happy to be back in Holland and to see her family. And when we came back from Holland on the plane, the stewardess gave me to my dad and I cried. I didn't want, I didn't recognize him. It had been weeks and my dad, of course, had missed me like crazy and he was so sad that I made strange. That was the, the story of my first time to Holland and and that connection between Holland and isn't that beautiful just a gorgeous gorgeous color and that is orchid oasis when I first heard there was going to be an orchid color I wasn't I'm not that big of a fan of those light colors so I wasn't that excited but it's it's beautiful okay and this is Tahitian Thai and uh, yeah I'm not looking at my notes now so I don't know what else I wanted to tell you about that but yeah the letter writing and the tradition of that was just amazing that connection between family and uh, now of course it's easier when I'm here I do a video call with my parents and they just love it that they can see their family and so even though their world has gotten really small with technology it's uh they can still connect and it's so nice And I know that my Omanopa came several times um, to visit, but my Opa, Opa Mom, Mom's dad, died very young. He was only 72. He had liver cancer. And I remember clearly when the phone call came from Holland, um, my mom was in the house, my dad was in the evening, and my dad was milking cows, and my mom was crying on the phone. Now, I had never seen my mother cry. And all she could choke out was, go get your father. So I knew something terrible had happened and my dad came rushing from the barn and there was some hurried conversation and the next day my mother was on a plane to Holland and she was able to see Opa before he died but yeah and now it's me that's in, in it here so now let's do 
one more color. We have starry sky here. Now that's the darkest of the five. So we'll start with the dark. I'm going to make a dark rose. Um, now it's me that's in Holland and worried about my elderly parents and whether or not I'm going to get the phone call. It's amazing how the story comes full circle. I'm just going to do a few lines around like this. And then I'm going to fill it in with the light. Let's see how that goes. And then we'll finish up with... Yeah, this is very dark. I'm just lightly trying to pull that dark color away so that you don't see the dark lines. But yeah, just beautiful, rich color. Now we're going to see what they look like when we do it with watercolor. Because when you wet, when you do in Dutch, it's called aquarelle, aquarelle, aquarelle. They also steal a lot of French words here in Holland. But that's because they were also occupied. They were under Napoleon's um, control for quite a while. That's how Dutch people got their last names too. Napoleon was the one who was behind that. So yeah, there are Dutch word there are French words in the Dutch language, a lot of them. More than they know, I think. Sometimes they think their Dutch word is actually a French word and it's not. Like Parapluu is the Dutch word for umbrella, and it's actually parapluie in French. They, and they didn't know that. Or, I mean, I'm sure some people do, but, but Gerard did not. So those are the colors. We've got sweet sorbet, um, parakeet party, um, orchid oasis, Tahitian tide, and starry sky. Super pretty, aren't they? Now let me see, did I have anything else I have to tell you about the story? for this time. So, oh yeah, I wanted to tell you about, okay, we've got to go this way now. So the farm. So remember my parents bought the farm from the Elgie family and they were a Scottish family and they sold the farm because Mrs. Elgie was a town girl and just couldn't adjust to farm life. Well, guess what? My mother was also a town girl. She did not grow up on a farm. Her father had a small store which also he went door to door. I think that he sold cheese. I'm not sure. I don't think he sold milk. So he was the cheese. He had a cheese shop and he also went with his horse and his wagon and he went door to door selling cheese and wooden shoes. So the only livestock my mother was used to was horses. So when they bought the farm, she was very clear with my father. She would not milk cows. I think she tried. She was deathly afraid. So my mother's jobs on the farm included feeding the calves, cleaning the milk house, and cleaning the milk machines. She would help separate the cream. And yeah, she did the, the, the garden. She always had a garden. She mowed the lawn and she loved to bake. She baked, I remember her baking bread and, and cookies and that kind of thing. And, um, and mom would also drive the tractor when the hay had to be baled for hay and straw. And that was mom's job. And I just think it was so so neat that um, they had that clear communication and my father never made my mother do something that she wasn't comfortable with. So, um, yeah, and it worked, it lasted. Okay, we're gonna go back to here. I have a piece of shimmery white cardstock and I'm going to take this block. Oh, guess what I forgot to do? Did I forget? Oh no, I didn't. I, I didn't, did I? No, I did that little blue. Okay, perfect. All right, good. We haven't forgotten anything. I'm going to take a small block and we'll start with Parakeet Party. So you just take your block and you press the ink onto it. And then we're going to take an aqua painter. Let's see. Oh, this is a really wide one. Oh, I, oh, I guess that will work. Here, I'm just going to make a wash. Um, so that is... I'm going to stamp it in once more. That is Parakeet Party. Okay, so now we have to clean it off and then we will do the next color. 
I, I like Parakeet Party right beside the Starry Sky. Starry Sky and Parakeet Party look so nice together. So, here we go. Oh, look how beautifully bright that is. So, look it up. Look at that. Beautiful. Nice. All right, clean off my brush, clean off the block. And I'm wondering which one I should do next. You know what? I think we're going to go with Tahitian Tide. I haven't decided which, you know, which colors look the nicest beside each other, so we're just playing. The sun is out. I'm so happy. Okay, and I'm happy that you joined me. And make sure if you're watching on YouTube that you take the time to click that red button and um, subscribe so that you don't miss my videos. I go every Monday, Wednesday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, which is 4 p.m. in the Netherlands. That is when you will find me on YouTube, okay? Someone had asked me that. I think it was Evelyn. And so that's my answer. I try to be consistent to make it easy for you. And I, I, I it seems to me that right now, so here's Sweet Sorbet. I have about half of my viewers have subscribed. So I would love for the other half of you to subscribe as well. I mean, nothing else happens. You won't get bombarded with anything. Just hit the subscribe button. And then um, you also hit the I, the bell icon. Here is the, this is not, enough. it's not wet enough. I think I might be out of water. I think, no, I'm not. Okay, squeeze. There we go. A little bit of water. And let's get a little bit more ink on there. Um, and yeah, then a bell icon pops up and then you will get notified. If you click on that bell as well, then you get notified whenever I upload a video. So that's nice. Isn't that pretty? Okay. I probably should have made my shimmery white cardstock wet first and then done it, but I didn't do that. So the last color we're going to do is Orchid Oasis. And my block is filthy now. My grid paper is filthy. That's okay. Here we have Orchid Oasis. I'm going to just clean my brush. So otherwise you won't get the right colors. Just cleaning that off. Reds are always harder to clean than other colors. Here I'm just making a little... It says push here. I've got dirty fingers. There we go. Now we've got a nice wash. Look at that. Beautiful. So there are the colors in the with the shimmery white and with the water painter. All right, guys, I think that is the end of my story today. And then next week, I will tell about my life growing up on the farm and what it was like and my first trip to Holland as a teenager. OK, and now we are getting super close to the story of Jackie and Gerard. If you have any questions, please let me know. Um, I'm honored that you're interested in the story of my family, and I hope that it um, encourages you to figure out what your story is and how it's affected your life and, and made you who you are. So thank you for joining me. I hope you have a super day. And of course, I also hope that you support my business as a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. Um, if you click in the show more under my video, you will see links to the products that I've used so that you can either buy them or you can join my team and get that discount and get that wonderful deal on all the in-color products. So, but above all, I love hearing from you. I love connecting with you. And um, yeah, I appreciate you. All right, take care. Bye.